Ryan McDermott is a principal R&D engineer at the Naval Nuclear Lab, and he focuses on developing and delivering emerging digital technology in support of the U.S. Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. He currently leads the quantum technology integration efforts at NNL, as well as future technology development in supercomputing and AI-enabled scientific software. Today, he is here with us to talk about the uh, Romanian QSL collaboration with NNL and the project we are hosting for this summer program that is using quantum and AI for climate, earth, and environmental simulations. Over to you, Brian. All right. Thanks, Fardon. All right. So I'm back after uh, you heard my talk last week, a little bit about what NNL does. But the project that uh, we contributed to Omanium's program this year actually doesn't have a lot to do with what we do at NNL at all. It's actually a very broad topic that I think would be interesting to a lot of the um, a lot of the audience on in the program this summer. And that's quantum and AI for Earth system modeling, climate modeling, and things related to that. And this project is a very uh, is going to be more open-ended and more research focused um, than some of the other ones. And so if this is something that uh, you might be interested in, maybe going into a research field or getting trying to get a feel for what it's like to actually research something where there's not a clear answer to it, this might be something um, that you're interested in pursuing further. So, uh, the main background here is that the Earth and its all of its systems are some of the most challenging systems that we have to simulate. Um, there's very highly complex physics involved, you know, ranging from the formation of water droplets and ice crystals and how light interacts with them, um, all the way up to the full globe scale of all these interacting systems where you have these nonlinear equations that are coupled with each other, they feed back on each other. Um, and they require some of the biggest supercomputers on Earth in order to simulate. Uh, but at the same time, thinking about, you know, what, where are we going in the future with our energy system um, and our environment, a lot of these challenges require intensive modeling, simulation, and data analysis of all these different Earth systems. And so from that standpoint, it's possible that quantum and AI are going to be enabling technologies for this. Um, so when you're doing a very large simulation, uh, you can either use these things to either get faster results, get more accurate predictions, or perhaps do new types of calculations that aren't possible right now. And so the purpose here is to try and research in the literature and either um, you know, document what folks are working on right now out there, like kind of like what is the frontier of research in this area, and also come up with ideas of your own of figuring out how to extend the research that's being done today into the future. So the project then um, is really to show how AI, quantum, and or even quantum-inspired methods can be applied to scientific computing in this um, earth and climate atmospheric science context. So this is uh, could be things like simulation of weather, climate, other earth systems. So all the way down from those atomic scales, so like atmospheric trace gases and things like that, all the way up to the global scale. So figuring out how can we use AI or quantum computing to accelerate the types of calculations that are being done when you're simulating uh, the weather and the climate. Um, another potential option would be to analyze and perform machine learning on weather, climate, or other environmental data. Uh, there's large open open source data sets out there on you know things related to um, whether it's cloud formations, precipitation, um, severe storms. There's all sorts of data sets out there that you can sort of grab and you know play around with and try different machine learning techniques on to see, okay, can I use this to do uh, new types of predictive um, predictive analysis that wasn't possible before. So that's potentially one direction. Um, another direction is maybe not related to, you know, simulating the earth itself, but looking at, okay, some of these sustainable technologies that are being talked about now, um, either related to energy, materials, um, batteries, photovoltaics, the power grid itself, agriculture, fertilizers, are there applications of quantum and AI in these things as well, since they are also very much related to the topic. And so the goal then is to try and, you know, uh, look into the research, find, report on, and try and reproduce some of these examples that are out there um, to sort of get a feel for how does this stuff really work in practice? Or even if you're feeling particularly ambitious, try and come up with your own ideas to get started on as potential future research directions. But this is very meant to be very open-ended. So research the things that interest you the most, not trying to be constraining in a particular thing that you want to um, you want to focus on. This is really meant to be a very broad project that appeals to a wide range of people that are interested in this topic. So as you do this project, then the questions you want to be able to answer at the end of this, um, and then in providing your submission would then be, 
why is this problem important? So what made you pick it? What, what was the, you know, what spoke to you about the particular topic within this area that, that you picked? And so you'll want to say like, you know, kind of a given explanation of why um, this problem is worth solving in the first place. Um, and then based off the research that you're, you've done, try and say something about how is this problem being addressed currently today? Are we using giant supercomputers to do it? Um, are we not doing it all because it's too hard? Um, is it something where there's not a lot of research out there at all, so nobody's really looked at it? Um, try and say something about, you know, sort of what is the state of the art? And then to take it a step further, try and say something about how would quantum computing or AI improve the way that this problem is solved? So if a quantum computer could solve a particular um, equation faster than is being done right now, that's something that we'd want to, you know, you'd want to understand as this project. Same thing if you can use an AI method to either do a better type of calculation or discover better types of materials. That's another thing that might be worth talking about um, in your submission. Um, and then finally, and this is the, um, you know, obviously a very open-ended part is how would you implement an example app using this solution? Um, we only have about a month, so it's kind of hard to write a code depending on what sort of compute resources you have access to here. But if, you know, if you're not able to actually write a code, um, you know, say something about how, if you're developing an application, how would you actually implement this? What would you do um, in line with the way the problem is currently being solved today to then extend it and apply AI or quantum to that problem? Um, and if there are, let's say you find some research and there is an example code out there or a, a software tool out there, um, like Vardan said earlier, you know, using those tools, you know, cite the fact that that tool exists and you used it, but try and do a, some sort of newer analysis beyond what was just done in the research that you found. So try and extend that work. Um, and so the purpose of all of this then, you know, sort of the learning goals here are really to just gain this experience in navigating the research literature. Um, just sort of watching the messages go by over the past couple of weeks here, a lot of people are interested in doing research. Um, and so if you haven't done that before, it's kind of a learning curve to get over like, okay, how do I, how do I find the things I'm looking for in the first place? How do I know what's good quality research? What's not good quality research? Being able to uh, you sort of understand like what it's like to navigate the research is a very important skill to have if you plan on going into a research field. Um, and then more specifically, you know, learning about how scientific simulations and machine learning are being done in practice. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, sort of a lot of stuff in the popular media today about, you know, uh, how AI or quantum can be good for types of different types of simulations, but it often gets glossed over of like what it actually means to do a simulation right now. And so part of this is going to be um, to learn how that's being done in practice and try to get a little bit more, um, I guess, a little bit more grounding in what are we having to work with today and where could we be going in the future. Um, and then sort of the core of this is then discover how quantum computing and AI can or maybe can't improve scientific models. It could very well be the case that um, these technologies don't provide an advantage to a particular application. But as with most things in research, knowing the negative is sometimes just as important as knowing the positive because it, it can give you information on where you should be focusing your efforts going into the future. Um, and then finally, this is also one that um, comes up a lot you know, in the research field is understanding how to turn ideas and math into code, into a practical application. A lot of the time we see um, you know, equations written down or maybe somebody has an idea of how a particular, um, you know, particular technology could help with simulations, but then actually you know, doing the work and turning that into code, that's a, a skill that is very important to have um, really not even in research, but in any, any um, technological endeavor. So some examples, and this is by no means exhaustive, you can certainly come up with your own or um, you know, feel free to ask questions about this. Um, but one could be show how historical climate data um, and simulation outputs could create a fast running AI model of the Earth's climate that runs on uh, very limited computing resources. So like a laptop or a PC. Uh, this is a very hot topic these days, and a few of the um, hardware vendors are even starting to put some of these out right now. Uh, basically, like they call it a, an emulator or a surrogate model of a very large coupled system of equations. Um, propose or develop a quantum algorithm for simulating batteries or photovoltaic materials. Um, this is one of the many cited applications of quantum computing in the near term. So, you know, maybe consider putting into practice how would you do this for. Um, a new type of material with an energy application. Um, modeling the interaction of light with water droplets and clouds. 
using quantum or AI. Um, one of the, you know, the common things that comes up a lot in sort of the modeling and simulation community is the uncertainty that clouds introduce um, into um, sort of these predictive models of, of the, the atmosphere. And so if, if there's a better way of understanding where those uncertainties are and perhaps addressing them with these technologies, that would be something that an interesting project could be. Um, on the side of quantum machine learning, discover if quantum machine learning algorithm performs or outperforms classical machine learning and saying identifying severe storms. So like in this picture here of a radar image of a tornado, right? You can use machine learning to identify these on radar to provide early warning against those. So does a quantum machine learning algorithm provide any benefit to something like that? Um, and then another one, maybe perhaps more practical is compare, contrast, and quantify the energy consumption of different types of quantum hardware. So do superconducting qubits draw more electricity than say neutral atom qubits in a, a quantum hardware setup? That, that might be an interesting thing to know about as more and more data centers look to integrate quantum computing in the future. Um, some other just general tips, you know, looking at this, um, you know, be bold here, right? This is a very open-ended project. This is really your opportunity to, you know, pick something that interests you and try and go, you know, take it as far as you can, um, you know, and be curious, you know, try and, you know, try and uncover as much as you can about your topic and really try and understand what, um, like what makes this a hard problem and, you know, maybe how the technology can, um, can address that. Uh, similarly, be creative, right? So try and try and push the boundary of where the research is, right? So if you see, you know, if you find stuff in your research that you know, you're, you're sort of confident where the frontiers are, try and take it a step further and um, you know, do as much as you can to extend that out into the future. Um, and ultimately, you know, as, you know, as Vardan talked about with the code of conduct and all that, you know, be yourself. Don't just take the project description and drop it into chat GPT and try and get an answer out of that. Don't, that's, that you don't learn anything doing that. Um, but that's not to say don't use like generative AI tools to help with understanding, right? Uh, you know, a very helpful thing to do in research, um, especially with complicated um, topics or terminology that you might not be familiar with is put it into something like chat GPT and have it re-explain it in simpler language. That's certainly a absolutely valid way of using that tool. Um, and similarly with, you know, follow the rest of the code of conduct, very important to, you know, sort of make sure you're representing yourself and your work uh, the right way. Uh, but ultimately have fun. This is something that's meant to, you know, sort of enrich your learning, get a feel for what it's like to do research out there. Um, so really, you know, try and have fun with this project because, you know, if you knew what you were doing, it wouldn't be called research. So um, these are a very limited set of resources, but I can certainly help people find more if, um, people have questions about a specific topic. Um, but with that, uh, thank you. Um, hope to hear what people find out.